you are quite well known on social media as the GOAT. And I don't know the full story, but I know it's come from, I think, the NRL Roast yep. page. But um, talk to me about it because I absolutely love it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's a couple of things. Uh, the Cam Smith where um, I was trying to play the ball and hit him in the nuts and um, Cam McGuinness <laughs> jumped over to score. That, that's <laughs> yeah. what the NRL Roast grabbed hold of that. And then that sort of... <laughs> Fell into my off season where I had a really big off season and uh, a few videos got around me and yep. yeah, from that. It's oh, the what a great kick! Oh, and Chad Townsend plays on, plays to the whistle, kicks away for Valentine. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Chad Townsend Show and today's episode is proudly presented by Cronulla Beer Co, your newest local craft beer. Make sure you head on the website www.cronullabeerco.com.au for more information and check out the social page at Cronulla Beer Co. That brings me into today's guest and former teammate of mine. Uh, we did spend a year together, 2017. Uh, which we might get into a little bit later on. But Jeremy Lattimore, mate, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for uh, having me on, mate. What's been happening, mate? Uh, yeah, retired at the end of last year. Uh, what's been happening in retirement? What are you up to these days? Yep, so it's been a roller coaster. I thought rugby league was a roller coaster, <laughs> but uh, retiring into COVID world has been interesting. But uh, I know that that's sort of hit everyone at all levels. So, um, you know, it's it's been a challenge with um, some in mortgage broken, which is um, yep. I, I'm sort of on my own there because I, I obviously work under someone else's banner, but yep. I, I'm yep. Jeremy Ladmore, the mortgage broker. And, uh, yeah, that's been challenging. And I still work with the Dragons a couple of days a week in the uh, partnership. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. going good. Awesome. So mortgage broking. I mean, how how did that come about? How did you get into that? Through one of uh, both mine and uh, your old mate, Tony Kane. Yeah, um, the great TC. Yeah. So I finished the uni degree when I was at Penrith and um, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Started doing some work with Pepper Money, who were a sponsor at Penrith at the time. Yep. Started going over to North Sydney, working the office there. And uh, yeah, that wasn't really for me. I didn't really enjoy going over there and being in that corporate environment. Mm -hmm. um, Tony had just started a business down in the Shire and... Asked me to start coming in there and uh, learning the tricks of the trade, and I, I really like that. And I did that for the last couple of years of uh, my football career. And um, yeah, when I retired, I went in with Tone, and three months after that, he pulled up stumps. <laughs> 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 so that was one of my challenges. But um, yeah, but no, look, it's it's something I've always uh, been an avid sort of investor in property, and um, you know, I, I love all things about the industry. Oh, sorry, except dealing with the banks. But um, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's definitely challenging, but um, it's something I can see myself in long term. And how how is, you know, you just mentioned, I guess, like the COVID life and obviously it's, like you said, it's impacted all of us, but like the stress levels compared to like you know, a professional athlete compared to like now, like there's obviously still some stress, but is there much differences? Yeah, definitely. We're not getting judged on everything you do on a football field or, you know, you get little wins and losses, but, you know, nothing compared to go out and win a football game in front of 50,000 people. Um, You're not copping DMs on a weekly basis. Correct. <laughs> um, you might get a uh, disgruntled uh, client, but I haven't uh, touched wood. I've been pretty lucky. Put I've, a few I've fires out. Clients. Yeah, and yep. it's it's really just dealing with pains in the ass at the bank. But, yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's, been, it's been good, but... Yeah, it's a different sort of roller coaster to the rugby league. And you mentioned that you're doing some partnership works still with the, with the Dragons. Talk to me a bit about about that role. Yeah, so it's just like a, the, the game day, like looking after people in hospitality. Um, you know, keeping current partners happy. It's sort of a bit of an ambassador role too. So you get to go to events and play golf next Friday, actually. So yes, exactly. it, it, it's great to have the connection with the football club, and obviously not on the level I, I was hoping because we weren't really allowed to interact with the group this year. But, yeah. Um, still, obviously, was allowed to go to games and. Um, you know, been, been there on game day. That was raw, sort of when I, I know we, we spoke about one of the questions be when you knew it was time to retire. Yep. There was a game I remember being at this year. It was a Thursday night and the boys played the Roosters and um, they'd lost and the boys on the bench played about 20 minutes and um, that, that might, ought to be my role the previous year and they had to do fitness on the field after the game to top up and I just remember watching that going far out. I'm so happy I'm not <laughs> yes. doing that. Like that, that, that really uh, hit the nail in the uh, coffin for me. Uh, you made a good decision. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you mentioned before that, uh, you know, 
uh, COVID, and it's obviously like you know we just said it's touched on on everyone. But you know, you being I guess in the in the housing industry, in the mortgage industry, how how has it affected like your work and and I guess the housing industry as a whole? Yep. So in terms of um, for myself, like I, I was going really good, building some great traction, and then the double whammy of sort of tone decided to get out of the industry into COVID. Um, like I, I was there for a couple of months, so I was just uh, looking after my son, trying to educate him at home, and um, you know I had no work going home on. School, yeah, yeah, it, it was it was really tough, and then come out the back of that, and um, it's it was slow there for a bit, but now you know it's sort of. Seems like it's normal. Like you talk about the Sydney property market, especially where we are in the Shire. Like it's probably above like what it, what it was before COVID. And um, you know, I don't know if people have you know they go to the in demand places now, but obviously there's markets across um, you know New South Wales and Australia who who have been affected. But you know, I think in Sydney we've been pretty lucky and. In terms of the, you know, it's more with the lending and, you know, the banks want to know income and how, how your industry is affected by COVID. But, um, yep. yeah, at, at the moment, things are good. Have the banks brought in anything since COVID's hit, like, extra for people to ensure that they can afford loans or anything like that? Well, that, that, they sort of have a couple of questions that they'll ask, especially for self-employed. Um, and yes, if you pay AYG and they see JobKeeper on their payslip, that's obviously a bit of a red flag. But yeah. um, no, like at, at the moment, it's all good. And in terms of lending, like they're talking about relaxing things in the new year to stimulate the economy and get people borrowing money, which, um, you know, that should only help us. Well, interest rates obviously at you know, an all-time low at the moment. Does that make your job... Easier? It's an easy sell, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. The, the banks have given away money. And, you know, you compare a 2.2 interest rate or, say, an investment, a 2.8 yeah. locked in two years and you're getting a rental yield of 4%, you're 1.2% up. So it does make sense if, um, you know, that's an avenue you want to explore for investing. But, um, yeah, when they're giving away money, it, it is a good time to just sort of be in the industry. So, guys, if you need a mortgage broker, go and see the LATS ASAP. But um, all right, we'll move into a bit of footy, mate. Um, absolute NRL veteran, <laughs> Big Latsy. Hey, 182 NRL games over 11 years with five different clubs. What are some of the fondest memories you have of playing in the NRL? Very well travelled. Yeah, look, mate, I grew up in a country town in Port Macquarie and um, always dreamt of playing the NRL and I had to work really hard to get there. I didn't debut till I was 23 and, um, yeah, obviously touched on five clubs. I, I went around the world. Hey, we went to New Zealand. and uh, Yep. But, yeah, look, it, it's something I really, really, like, never took for granted as a guy who, you know, I was on the fringe a lot and had to work hard for everything I got and Definitely. I realised I wasn't one of the most talented guys. So, And I know over the last three, four, three or four years of my career, I was just like, this is the best job in the world. And yep. um, you go into training every day to play football with your mates, you're training hard, you're feeling good about yourself and... Um, you know, you're taking the piss and that's obviously something I used to love and <laughs> yeah. winding the boys up and um, you go into an office environment, it's a fair bit different. <laughs> and um, But yeah, look, I, I, I loved it, you know. You, you're playing football for to get paid and then you're, you're playing with your mates and, you know, you're playing in front of people. So it's something that I, I loved and never took for granted and something I look back on fondly. Yeah, definitely. Look, I, I, you know, when I get asked this question, I'm like... Like the the question, I mean the the time playing, like playing games and winning games. Like I think that's after a win, it's like it's the best feeling. But the, the time, like throughout the week, where it's like between training sessions or you know going down the cafe, that's the time where you're like, man, this is it really hits home that it is the dream job, isn't it? A hundred percent, mate. And yeah, you, you, you lift and weights, you're running on the field, you're feeling good, you're tired, but you know, you're feeling good about yourself. You're going for a coffee, you're having a laugh and then obviously- With your best mates. Exactly. But, and then obviously, yeah, there, there's plenty of downsides to rugby league and yep. um, it is a roller coaster. and depending whether you're winning, you're losing, the coaches are talking to you, yep. you won't look at you or you're in your own <laughs> brain going, I don't know, we lost me this week, what's going on here? <laughs> and, uh, you know, after a game, you might be there staring at the ceiling and going, oh shit, that first run, oh that first tackle, you're going over everything. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is it is a pretty cool job. So eleven years in the top grade, what was your most like successful, enjoyable season? Do you have one? Yeah, oh, I've got a couple. Like I, I really two thousand and fourteen I, I played every game except two for suspension and Penrith we had a really good year where Why'd we Why'd you get suspended? Crusher. Oh. Yeah, that was the only time I ever got suspended was That's crushers. Yeah, the wrestling, yeah, exactly. Um but 
2014, you know, we beat the Roosters the first week of the finals when no one um, gives a chance. And I remember our, our old mate Jimmy Maloney trying to ring me all night the night before to uh, make a bit of a personal bet, which I won't repeat on um, <laughs> on the potty. But um, oh, yeah, when, when, when we did beat him, I chased him around the field to try and claim the uh, winning bet. But, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but then we lost the prelim to Canterbury. But just that whole year, and we had a good, lot of good young guys now who who are the superstars in that team coming through. And um, to 2018 at the Dragons, you know, we won the first eight straight or yep. first seven. And um, you know what it's like. You you, you experienced it Cronulla in 2016 when you're just winning and everything's happening. It's and, a vibe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And um, I had pretty like good years and years, and always look back and you know when things are good on the field things are good off it you know it's just the yep. feeling in the camp you're rolling into training and you know things are happening 100 percent. you and uh, you just briefly touched on jimmy maloney and and for people out there who might not know lats in you guys are quite close yep. came again uh, into first grade sort of similar ages tell me a bit about yes. h- how you met jimmy S- yep so um fortunately unfortunately <laughs> I, I got um, unfortunately I, I got moved in with him at uh 20 years of age at Parramatta. we were both um coming from i come from cronulla when i was in the lower grades and he come from north sydney bears bar and uh, um <laughs> We lived together for two years and he was a pain in my ass, but, you know, he's a lovable dude and, you yep. know, we had a lot, a lot of good times and uh, he went to Melbourne that next year and I, I ended up debuting at Parramatta. Yep. Then we uh, followed each other, the New Zealand Warriors, and played a couple of years there and obviously we played that year together in 2017 with you and, um, yep, yep, yep. you know, we, yeah, we're still best mates today and we're both like in each other's groom's party and that, that was when he just signed at the Roosters actually when he was in my groom's party and he's up on stage inviting everyone to Nick Politis' <laughs> house for a barbecue and... <laughs> He's a, he's a unique character, but he's a guy so that everyone unique. loves to be around. But, um, yeah, he, he's not – I wouldn't say he's a professional, but he's just a friggin' winner. No, nah, he's definitely not a professional, but he's the man, isn't he? Oh, he's the best. He's, he's one the of the best. great blokes to have around. And, he, you know, he's in another semi-final this weekend. And, you know, I was and looking – And they'll probably win. Yeah. They're, they're, I had a look this morning. They're about $3.28 to beat St. Helens, but it won't surprise yeah. me if they win. And yeah. with him and Fleo, you know, big game players in yeah. that team. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. What, what don't you miss – about playing in the NRL preseason, like oh, yesterday, the Dragon Boys are back, and I, I, I did a preseason under Anthony Griffin. And the first session we did back then was two two point fives and two one point twos, and the boys did the same thing yesterday. And I was just grinning ear to ear, thinking of you know the head noise, and you know you come off six seven weeks of just getting on the piss and not looking after yourself into that. And um, jeez, yeah. So th- that's definitely something I don't miss. Obviously, the positive is you start feeling good about yourself. Maybe in about two months, but <laughs> yeah. at two months of head noise. And, uh, yeah, oh, like yeah, we don't start till December the ninth. But going back into preseason, like in and because you obviously have a break where you need to rest your body. You're not. You know, at nowhere near your, your peak fitness levels, but those first few sessions, especially when it's hot, it's like that's it's tough, isn't it? Mentally, probably the toughest. Would you agree? Mentally, hundred yeah, percent. It's just a mental battle, and you sort of can get yourself in a rhythm. And early in my career, I used to flog myself over the off season, so I'd come back fit, trying and impress. Yeah. But by the end of my career, I'd give a shit. I drank the whole time, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, smoked few durries. I'm coming day one, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. durry was coming out the ears. But um, <laughs> you know, it's something that yeah, you, you, as you get older, you realise you're going to get fit. You yeah, just got to yep. you know ride out that head noise for the first month or two. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. Like, and as you get older in the NRL, like a lot of the senior players, like get you know they get looked after. Like they've been around for a long time. They've shown that they can handle the fitness levels. And I think if you can come back in 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 shape, and you can hit the ground running, like that to me is you know it's the perfect entrance into preseason. Yeah. But I've got another question for you. This is a question that I came up in the top of my head, so I think it's a pretty good one. But if you were NRL CEO, yep. what would you change about how the NRL is run at the moment? Would you change any rule or anything, any, any on-field rule or off-field rule, anything? Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah, well, oh, Valandis has sort of come in and just done everything out the go. Yeah. He, he's unbelievable and, you know, things he's done is just – as an outsider now, as a fan, he's just unreal. Everything he touched turns to gold. So, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I feel like at times, and for myself, I was pretty relaxed over the last couple of years of my career and being myself, and I got away with it. But yep. a lot of the boys have to put up, you know, barriers. And um, That's all good. That's his phone's just on. He's going to flip it on silent. 
What a put on so like <laughs> Um, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, just allowing boys to be themselves because yep. you yep. know, and I know you're a massive American sport fan. Where you know them guys are just. Mm. Uh, you know they talk about how good they are and mm. how much fun they're having and they embrace it over there whereas we've still got that tall poppy culture yep definitely so i don't know if that's more of a nrl thing or uh just our culture but um mm. i mean even like i saw like after the melbourne storm won the grand final like they were wearing around these vintage t-shirts that had i think they had like six rings on them and they had the rings on there that were you know, banned by the NRL for the yeah. years they were over the salary cap. And then I saw an article where it was like, NRL bans Storm from wearing a T-shirt. And I was just like, how can you ban someone from wearing a T-shirt? Like, I don't think that's possible. But then, again, it's like for them to, you know, to show that it's like their personality, they don't really care yeah. what anyone else says. They can just... 100%. They're yeah. going to be themselves. Totally. Actually, you know, what one thing I would try and change is a friggin' media landscape and, you know, people like yourself and Den and Kemp and, um, you know, the NRL roast, you know, you use a take... And YKTR Sports, yep. you use a taking it direct from player to fan and there's no yep. bullshit in between. And even something I was reading about Denny Widley yesterday trying to rip into Cam Smith about something he, mm. he did and I was just like... He, there's just no need to comment on it. They're just trying to stir shit. And he's made a career yep. out of doing it. But, yep. Um, yep. yeah, I, that that sort of stuff with the media pissed me off. Yeah, I love all those guys you just mentioned. Like, yep. just putting stuff out there, especially Den and, and uh, Ice and the YKTR boys, like, yep. putting some awesome stuff out there. Um, but for me, if I was to change one thing, I think it would probably be around third-party payments. Because there's, at the moment, there's, like, a, a cap on how much teams can have. Actually, that and IP, yeah. So intellectual property, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And for me, like, I know if I gave you time, you'd be able to think of a thousand yeah. things on this and I'll put you on the spot here. But for me, third-party payments, would I would have no cap on third-party. And I know some teams will say, like, look, the Broncos get, like, you know, so much third-party. But if they can get the money, like, yep. let them get the money. 100%. Like, for me, it's like us as players, we have, you know, a small window to earn some money that is you know we can use for the rest of our lives and i feel like there's a look there's a cap on there and i've heard of players like uh get asked to do like promos at at bunnings for a few thousand dollars but have had it turned down by the nrl because of conflicts with sponsorship and things like that and that's one thing that i would change 100 percent. too many barriers there as well as yeah the intellectual property you know chad townsend should be able to sell chad 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 townsend jerseys definitely that's but then i'll just Yep. have the loss thing and you got they got no control <laughs> like players have no control over anything they're making money and bank everywhere and the players can't definitely because they've had a bit extra money if you think if like james tedesco right brought out a, a merchandise tedesco yeah like he had a white shirt with like maybe a lot his logo on the front or even if there was like the, a rooster or something like that and yep. then he had tedesco on the top with a one on the back i reckon he'd sell thousands of them 100 percent, thousands of them yeah but He's actually not allowed to do that at the moment due yeah. to the IP rules and restrictions, which, yeah. um, you know, yeah. hopefully we, we might see it get changed one day. But Yeah. No, cause like you touched on, I was on the RLPA board and, you know, Jimmy Maloney, he, he was on that board and, mate, he, like, you know, Jimmy can give off an indication. He's not that intelligent, mate. He's so yep. smart and um, articulates himself so well. And that, that was one of his greatest gripes is the yep. IP and not being able to use your personal brand. Yeah. Like, yeah, Jimmy could have plenty of things over the years he could have sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could have brought out a barbecue. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> barbecue alone edition. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah, but then that, that, yeah, that, that is definitely something which, you know, hopefully in the next CBA, you, the RLPA yeah. can make some more progress because I, I know that was a gripe on the last CBA. Yep, yep, definitely. All right, uh, I've got another question here. Now, you are quite well known on social media as the GOAT and – I don't know the full story, but I know it's come from, I think, the NRL Roast yep. page. But um, talk to me about it because I absolutely love it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's a couple of things. Uh, the Cam Smith where um, I was trying to play the ball and hit him in the nuts and um, Cam McGuinness <laughs> jumped over to score. That, that's yeah. what the NRL Roast grabbed hold of that. And then that sort of <laughs> fell into me off-season where I had a really big off-season and uh, a few videos got around me. And, yep. Yeah, from yep. that. Was that in Bali when you – Bali, I had a couple of good nights over there, yeah. <laughs> Fell in the water. Fell in the, the water, yes. split my head open. Um, yes. So after that, yeah, like 
2018, that's when the, the goats sort of come about. And um, even on the weekend, I was out in the Central Coast and there was goats coming from everywhere. It was quite funny. <laughs> really? But yeah. Fair Just decent. people that are that. Yeah, out. But yeah it's, it's a good laugh. And, you know, you, you've played me. I, I enjoy having a good time and yeah, yeah, like having uh, a bit of a relax. So I, I sort of embraced it and uh, had a bit of fun with it. I love that. I mean, now that you're retired, I mean, you might be able to make goat T-shirts yeah, and put your know. face on it. <laughs> No NRL on it, but <laughs> yeah, they'll come. They'll come hunting. <laughs> Don't know if anyone will buy it, but I yeah, yeah, roasty will, roasty will. Yeah. Um, maybe chucking on white KTR merch. Get the boys. Not yeah, a bad idea. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm sure they'll, they'll a little do partnership it. coming up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so retired at the end of 2019. Um, you now you briefly touched on yeah you know, that you did some uh, f- you know some stuff to lead into your retirement. Tell me about, you know, how you prepared because, you know, I'm getting towards the latter stages of my career and I've still got a few, a few years left, but I'm someone who likes to be planned and organised and have my options open and things like that. And when you, for people who might not know, when you get to the age of about, I think it's 27, you kind of get into the transition phase of your career where the NRL will start to give you some uh, some videos and some some tools to use and, and during the off season or during the year, sorry, Lats was a part of the NRL sort of transition team with the RLPA where the, there were some some videos and uh, to help players with the transition. You and Nat, I saw yep, yep. Um, presented one of them. But talk to me a bit a bit, a bit about that. The, the whole transition thing. The transition thing, yeah. The videos and you know what the whole point of was to try and you know put the point out to yep. to those players. Yeah, well, the reality is you think you're ready, but you're bloody not. And like <laughs> we've just touched on before about how, how good it is going to train with your mates every day and training and stuff. Like, and I, I remember November comes around and last year and I'm heading into work and by lunchtime I'm twiddling my thumbs going far out. This is going to like this is gonna be hard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I was well prepared. And you're another guy who I know you, you're very well prepared and you've got a few things going on and, you, you know, you th- you get there and the reality is – in talking to you know, I train with Luke Lewis every day, and yep. he's still he's two or three years retired, and he's still like, man, I still struggle with this, and mm. and and that's sort of the message which just we're trying to give through these um the transition seminar is you need to educate yourself, you need to work while you're still playing, and find something that you want to do when you're retired because you um you do have a lot of time when you're still playing rugby league t- in terms of spare time to to build a, another career and um you know when you do retire you can hit the ground running because the reality is you think you're ready but you're not ready yeah, yeah. not until it actually hits you in the face where it's like boom yeah what am i doing now but you you just mentioned that you're training with you know Luke Lewis every day and Latsy and the boys I've been on the same gym as, as sure the boys, right. Body Fit Marina. Thanks for looking after us. Legends. But yes, they are legends down there. But, um, you know, you guys head down there quite early and, and I briefly had a chat to you at, at the gym about, you know, what your kind of morning routine is now. And, yep. and you mentioned to me that, you know, you, you're, you're up at 5 a.m. every day, go through a little bit of a routine, head to the gym. But talk to me a bit about, you know, your morning routine and I guess why you started that. Yeah, yeah. Just quickly, that just comes back to so you know rugby league where you're told to be what to do, yep. yeah, all, all that. So I come across the five AM club book and just bought it. Did you? Yeah, week. mad. And <laughs> after you told me about, it. I told you, bro, my mate. <laughs> yeah. Um. So my wife get, gets up and goes to the gym at quarter to five. So I was I'd just lay in bed for another forty five, then start to get prepped to go to the gym when she'd come back and yep. read read about that. Sorry, and I heard Hugh Jackman on a podcast talking um, where he read, read for half an hour every morning, then meditated. So that was what actually started. I started doing that a month before I come across the 5 a.m. book. And yep. then, so now I sort of, yeah, I try and read for 20 minutes, meditate, journal, um, gratitude. And, uh, you know, I've got to listen to an audio book every morning. So just try and use that hour before I go to the gym to, um, you know, get myself primed and ready to go. I love that. I absolutely love that. How do you think doing that, do you think it's made you more productive? Do you think it's made you more focused? Do you think it's made you better father talk to me a bit about that yeah it's just a great way to start the day into then going and you know ripping into the gym and having a sauna every morning but yeah. by you know eight o'clock i've already been up for three hours and i'm feeling unreal and um then you have to sort of head off to work 
but by by night time though, I'm ready for bed at about nine o'clock. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you look. I, I think the meditation, like I, I used to do it a little bit when I played, but I, I don't know. I must have been doing it probably. I was sort of just taking the piss. But yeah, how do you go with it now? Can yeah, you really good. Do it for long. Yeah, and it's just, it's so quiet at that time. The kids yep. aren't aren't awake, and um, it's just the best time to do it. And um, it, and on the five AM club, there's like an app that you can follow, and um, he sort of talks you through it. And it's if you do it for sixty six days, it, it becomes a habit. Oh, really? Yes, and actually the book before I read that was Atomic Habits. So, yep. yeah, just trying to put things in, in place to limit the head noise and, um, you know, just make sure I'm making the most of every day. I love, I absolutely love that. That is, that's awesome. Well, Blatty, during, throughout your career, I mean, you were a big advocate for the players. You know, what you mentioned before, you jumped on the RLPA board. You got, a, like, such a great legacy among the players and what you did for the players – what advice would you give to players? What advice would you give to a player who's just coming into the NRL? He's just says he's, he's nineteen, he's just made his debut, and he's just signed a three year deal with with his team. What advice would you give to that kid? Well, for, first, and this is what player managers should be doing, which a lot of them don't. But mm-hmm. you know, should be you know starting to look to how, how you can make your money work for you. So, yep. whether that's investing into property, investing into you know, start investing in into index funds because you know if you're going to be in the NRL for twelve years and you're better off there than yeah, in your bank account. Hundred percent. Put two hundred dollars a month away, and that's not a lot, not a lot, lot of money. But you do that for twelve years, and when, when you retire in twelve years, that's going to be a lot of money. And then, but then you're going to do it for another thirty or forty years until you're due to retire anyway mm. um so, i love that yeah invest educate make sure you doesn't have to be uni that's i think that's an old school thing now you've got people who are entrepreneurs and yep. building businesses but find something that you're passionate about and on your days off you can do that like still enjoy yourself because you, you're only young so yep, yep, yep. You, you go for coffee go for a surf do what you do but um try and find time to you know study and educate and um you know just never take anything for granted because you know as you touched on, I played 11 years across five clubs, two of them twice. Trivia question right there, most off the bench. <laughs> yeah. Um, but How yeah. many tries, just quickly? Seven. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Couple denied. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just something you should never take for granted. Yep. And, yep. Um, you know, I've, I, I hung around that fringe for a long time and, you know, I never earned massive money, but, um, you know, I retired and I've done okay. What are your thoughts on, I guess, the perception of players that every NRL player, you know, earns really good money or a million dollars? And because that's it's the reality is that's not just not the case, is it? A hundred percent. And you, you could probably work it out yourself, but there's probably four or five players in every squad who takes up a nucleus of the salary cap, and yep. then you yep. know. You got your middle range players who you know might be on a couple hundred, but then you got yep. I don't know however many on bloody a hundred k. Yep. Um. So the reality is, you know, it's good money for a twenty one year old, but yeah. um, when that 21, 21 year old can't get a contract or is retired, he's going to go back to fifty mm. or sixty k, depending what he's done in that time in the NRL to make sure he can hit the ground running when he retires. So yeah. Yep. There is there is obviously a stigma that football players are overpaid and mm. you know they um you know they shouldn't be getting the money they do but the reality is it's a tough environment to work in every day everyone's judging everything you do and um yeah the reality is not everyone's on freaking good money definitely and the also like the reality is that there's players like there would be that many players right now that are off contract that don't have contracts next year yeah. and are either just waiting for their manager to ring them or waiting for an opportunity. They stop getting paid now, um, you know, not sure what to do, potentially have to take up like a part-time job. Like first graders, guys that would have played like over half the games this year who probably don't have a contract who are working yep. like right now. Like that, people don't understand that that happens. And then there's guys as well who like have fam- have wives, families as yep. well we're out of contract waiting for calls from the manager like that's a stressful part of the game isn't it 100 percent, mate it, it is it's definitely um yeah something that's not spoken about a lot in the mainstream media and you know again touching on you boys you use sort of the guys that bring it bring it to the forefront and you know it gets spoken about a little bit because not not a lot of people realize yep. the yep. reality of rugby league and there you know people have kids and some wives don't work so definitely i've been very lucky in that aspect with my wife having a good job and sort of ease the pressure on me how has your wife supported you throughout your NRL career? Oh, man, she's been rock solid. She followed me to New Zealand and yep. uh, around Sydney. So, 
Yeah, good yeah, yeah, no, it's been good, and she she's got a yeah, re- really good job now. She looks after the the milk lab, sort of almond milks and yep, macadamia yep. milk, so she's got a good job. So now it's uh, my turn to pick up the kids from school and <laughs> get them home and get them fed and <laughs> ride that roller coaster from <laughs> four thirty to about six thirty. <laughs> She reckons the morning shift's harder, but I, I call BS on yeah, that because yeah. she gets them ready in the morning when I'm at the gym. But it's uh, yeah, you, you know yourself, mate. It's uh, it's tough with kids. And Every day's a different day, and they don't give a shit what sort of day you've had because <laughs> their day is a lot worse than mine, apparently. Oh man, I love that. And that's um, you know, just back on Jack back quickly. I guess you know the podcast and like I want people to know like what the real like what the reality is of NRL. And I want people to like understand that, you know, not everyone's on a million dollars. Yeah, people. some some players get paid extraordinarily well, yep. but they deserve every single cent of it. And I will always, and I know you will too, we will always back the players. Being a player, it's like if you're playing the NRL, boom, you're all of a sudden like you're in this special elite club where it's like we have each other's backs. Would you agree? Yeah, well, here's two examples, right? I'm in the media in the last week or two, one of my best mates, Josh Mansell, has been told two days after a grand final that he's not needed anymore and he won't be part of the squad next year if he stays there. Yeah. Then you've got Josh Alloway. The club won't let him go because he can go get a bigger offer yep. um, to go to Manly. Like, and, and that's the reality. You're no good to the club. See you later. Yep. But if the club still sees value in you, that they'll like, dig their heels in and say you're staying. But at the end of the day, like, Josh has been at that club for nine years. Yeah, I know. And, you know, Josh is uh, – Alloway, he, he's got this chance to go get a payday and the yep. club's – I read something, I don't know what his name is, Lee, someone is the CEO maybe saying, yeah. no, we're not letting him go. He can go mow lawns or whatever. Yeah, right. Um, and that's just – yeah. Cause I, that, 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 again, like that is – like. Fans will, you know, go up in arms about if a player wants to get out of their contract. Like the biggest one that comes to my mind is probably Ryan Madison in the last 12 months. Like yep. there was a big upheaval when he had a contract at the Tigers but wanted to get out because he we could get more money at Parramatta and kind of dug his heels in and did whatever. And, and you know, was only wanted to make, bet, you know, make the most of his situation where he could earn some more money. Yep. And it's like... Well, fans were pretty angry because he left, but it's like you can't deny the bloke. He's he wants to get more money. Like he's, he's putting himself first, and sometimes in this industry, yep. you have to put yourself first. And clubs like Penrith have just put themselves first when they want to tell Source that he's he's not wanted. But now because I see potentially a younger guy in the squad, yeah, he'll be on less money. He'll be less money, yeah. and he'll fit into the salary cap. And yep. then, like, but no fans are sort of you know being upset towards Penrith. Yeah, but. I think people need to understand that it happens both sides. So you can't, yep. you know, be upset at a player if he wants to leave for more money. Yeah, and that's the reality. It's a business. It's always a business it's when business a club decision. asks the player to leave. Yeah. But when it's a player goes, oh, there's no loyalty. Yeah. <laughs> there's no loyalty. But, mate, they, yeah, it's, uh, that's yep. something, you know. I, I got told it for a number of clubs, sorry, mate, you're not needed anymore. Yeah. Whatever, cop it on the chin, go yep. to the next club. But then there's yep. other yep. times you might leave for an opportunity. Yeah. Yep. And in Josh Alloway is case he was getting offered a massive deal out they've lost Adam Fanor Blake yep you can't deny a guy that chance definitely I 100% agree with you there let's let's move into some fan questions people have thrown in we've got about five here well, um, the first one is from Matt 8 Ranley who are the three teammates you would want on Mad Monday <laughs> that I've played that with. you've played with yeah Maloney <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot of good times Mansour <laughs> yep the source. Jeez, source has good value, isn't he? Oh, he's great, mate. Oh. He, he's uh, he's I love one of that guy. He's up. a legend. The third one, I don't know. Me and Yui Aiken had a lot of good times together at the Dragons yep. and um in season two when we probably shouldn't have been. Just gone to the Warriors, hasn't he? Yeah, 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 mate. Yep. He, he's great. And he, for a young guy, he's actually very he's like yourself, mate. He's educated, he, he's on the yep. ball, he invests and um yeah, he, he's a good dude. Mate, but that's yeah, awesome. I'll give I'll give you Aiken the third one. All right, beautiful, great answer. Next question is from Byron Brennan Seven. What is your best? What was your best try in your career? Oh Jesus! Hey, you got me on. You got seven of them. Let me think. <laughs> Four of them were off kicks. I think. <laughs> um, oh, my first one. It was against the Knights. I, I was from Port Macquarie. Mum and Dad were there. Yeah. Um, wasn't that there? No, she was in New Zealand. Um, actually, then another try I got in um, Newcastle. To, it was a game before the semi final in 2018. We'll be playing like shit. And uh, yep. I remember I got the ball, and apparently in the um, the coach's box, Mary's like, Why that? 
F did they give it to that bloke? And then I've stumbled over the line and scored. Oh, I think but I remember this actually. Yeah, little hit and yeah. spin. And was that when they flashed to Mary and Mary's saying it oh, and you can read his yeah. lips? Yeah, he yes. was blowing up. I remember it. it. But then yeah. he ended up giving me the play of the week. So that got us back in the game and we ended up winning that game and going up and pumping Brisbane the next week. But, you know, mum and dad and um, my wife and two kids were there. So that was pretty cool. That's hectic. All right, next question is from Clarky AC. Big Clarkos. <laughs> What is your favourite exercise in the gym? Half range chin ups or quarter range box squats? Yeah, there's look, a bit in that. There is a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Clarky, I was a pain in his ass for two years at the Dragons in terms of the gym. I'd just walk around annoying blokes and refusing to do things because <laughs> knee tendonitis was always my excuse for me quarter range squats. And yeah, then yeah, I'd have yeah. wonder why I had a sore back. But uh, now I've got frigging Groover riding me in the gym, counting me reps. But yeah, 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 yeah. Pr- probably uh, the squats. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, next question is from Brendan Miller, 11. Lats, you're 18 years old. Again, you have an offer on the table from your favourite club. Which one is it? When I was 18, oh, post rugby league favourite no, club or uh, when I was 18? When you're 18, when you're coming in. Yeah, jeez. I was a Brisbane fella. Broncos uh, fan as a kid. Um, so, yeah, oh, God, back then too, they were hectic. You so, played for the Port Macquarie Sharks? Port Macquarie Sharks, yeah. Um, and you, you love the Broncos? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I might even a little bit of Queensland fan back then too. I don't oh, know why. I don't know. No, I'm New South <laughs> for life now. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it would have been pretty cool to play for Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. and that that was one of my, like probably my favourite ground to play at. I yeah. had a really good yeah. record there. Awesome. All right. Last question is from D Han ninety four. The best forward you've played with, and then the best forward you've played against. Yeah, wow. Best forward I played against. Oh, love Tom Delilah, way. Yep. Just a guy like, and I've got done done all right. Like I've sprinted from Marker, attacking around the legs. You butte. Then a couple of times sprinted from Marker, and he stepped back into me and just buried me in the ground. You got a lethal right foot, mate. Only. He can do anything, and you know that that's sort of where the game's going. He's just, they're strong, fast, powerful. Not like us tall, skinny white guys yeah, who yeah, just yeah. have work ethic and no leg speed. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know who do I play with. Who, who I'd say was the best. I played with James Graham late in his career and yep. um, obviously Father Time had sort of caught up with his speed and stuff, but just his passion and yeah. his drive and his knowledge of the game, I like, would have loved to play with him in his prime. But Definitely. I mean, I, I can think of probably off the top of my head some guys you probably would have played with, like James Graham definitely would come to mind. Gals, uh, Gal, Luke Lewis. Luke Lewis, Simon Mannering. Simon, Michael Luck. Like, and he's someone yeah. that not many people would talk about, but, mate, he was yeah. – yeah. Unbelievably tough. And Simon Mannering, like my, my most humble guy. And yep, definitely. Led that club and country for 10 years. Yep. And then you go into the pub and like, no one had recognised him. Yeah, He's just yeah, the man. Yeah, definitely. 100%. All right, big lads, mate. Let's, we'll wrap it up there, mate. Um, look, I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, thanks so much, mate. Um, I'll see you down at the gym one time, all right? No worries, mate. I'll take you through a session. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, mate. And, uh, yeah, and I hope some uh, people get a bit more of an understanding of, you know, what, what, what some of us battles are like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, bros. Cheers, mate. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode of the Chad Townsend Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe in the iTunes and Spotify you can also check it out on YouTube. Laters.